Over the past several decades, the European Union's energy landscape has shifted considerably due to changing policy priorities, technological developments, and evolving geopolitical dynamics. In the early post-war decades, the EU and its predecessor communities relied heavily on coal and oil, which together powered the region's industrial growth. By the 1970s, oil alone accounted for a substantial share of total EU energy consumption. However, the oil crises of that era prompted the EU to seek diversification and reduce its vulnerability to external supply shocks. From the 1980s onward, natural gas became increasingly important. Significant volumes were sourced from domestic fields in the North Sea and notably from Russia, which emerged as a major external supplier. At the same time, nuclear power expanded in several member states, most prominently in France, where it met a large proportion of electricity demand. By the early 2000s, nuclear energy typically provided around a quarter of the EU's electricity, while natural gas secured a stable foothold in heating, industry, and power generation. The 2000s and 2010s marked a turning point with the EU's growing commitment to climate policies and renewable energy targets. Wind and solar power installations grew exponentially, aided by technological advancements and cost reductions. By 2020, the share of renewables in gross final energy consumption had risen above 20%, and these sources were increasingly competing with coal and, in some cases, natural gas for a central place in Europe's power mix. In recent years, geopolitical tensions have tested the resilience of these evolving energy systems. Following the start of the conflict between Russia and Ukraine, the EU imposed various sanctions on Russia. Russia had long provided a significant share of Europe's natural gas imports, over 40% before 2022, and also supplied oil and coal. Restrictions on Russian energy exports combined with Russian countermeasures introduced volatility in European energy markets. Many EU member states, having relied on Russian pipelines for decades, encountered supply disruptions and price spikes as they sought alternative suppliers and expanded LNG import capacity. The situation worsened due to the new policies. The European Union's recent legislative efforts to accelerate its green energy transition have introduced new layers of complexity to an already challenging endeavor. Under the umbrella of the European Green Deal and the subsequent Fit for 55 legislative package, the EU is pushing to cut greenhouse gas emissions by at least 55% by 2030 compared to 1990 levels and to achieve climate neutrality by 2050. In line with these goals, the EU has proposed more ambitious targets for renewable energy expansion and energy efficiency, revising key directives and proposing new regulations that collectively raise the bar for member states. One prominent piece of legislation, the revision of the Renewable Energy Directive, sets higher, binding targets for renewables. In March 2023, EU negotiators agreed to increase the share of renewables in the EU's overall energy consumption to 42.5% by 2030, up from the previous 32% target. This represents a substantial lift in ambition, requiring accelerated deployment of wind, solar, and other low-carbon technologies. Simultaneously, measures like the Revised Energy Efficiency Directive and the Updated Emissions Trading System ETS, are tightening the carbon market and encouraging faster decarbonization across all sectors, from power generation and industry to transport and buildings. However, these heightened environmental standards and targets come at a time when Europe's energy systems are under strain due to broader geopolitical and economic factors. The disruption of traditional fossil fuel supplies, notably those previously sourced from Russia, has already placed European energy markets under pressure. Reduced imports, combined with high and volatile gas and electricity prices in 2022 to 2023, have led member states to seek new sources of energy, often at short notice. While this situation has spurred a renewed focus on energy diversification and self-reliance, it also creates near-term challenges for countries reliant on coal and gas as bridging fuels. Europe is currently confronted with an unprecedented energy crisis, shaped by the confluence of declining Russian gas flows, erratic renewable energy production, intensifying geopolitical tensions, and seasonal constraints on key energy sources. Against the backdrop of shifting global alliances and internal political instability, European policymakers and industry stakeholders are navigating an increasingly complex landscape. Recent data and market indicators underscore the fragility of Europe's energy security 
and the urgent need for diversified, stable, and sustainable energy solutions. Cessation of Russian Gas For decades, Russia served as Europe's most significant single supplier of natural gas. As recently as 2021, the Russian Federation provided over 40% of the European Union's total gas imports, equating to roughly 155 billion cubic meters annually. This volume represented a cornerstone of the EU's energy security strategy, with Russian pipeline gas often being one of the most cost-competitive and readily available options. A substantial portion of these deliveries, estimated between 40 and 50 billion cubic meters per year, has historically transited through Ukraine's extensive Soviet-era pipeline network. The Ukrainian transit route known collectively as the Brotherhood Pipeline System long predated more recent pipelines such as Nord Stream and Turk Stream. In fact, until the mid-2010s, well over half of Russia's gas exports to the EU passed through Ukrainian territory. While the share gradually declined with the construction of alternative routes, Ukraine's pipelines remained a critical artery supplying countries such as Slovakia, Austria, the Czech Republic, and beyond. However, the expiration of the existing gas transit agreement between Russia and Ukraine on January 1, 2025, poses a significant challenge to this traditional arrangement. The current contract, signed in late 2019, guaranteed at least 65 billion cubic meters of Russian gas would flow through Ukraine in 2020 and 40 billion cubic meters per year between 2021 and 2024. As the war in Ukraine escalated in 2022, European imports of Russian pipeline gas began to shrink dramatically. By the end of that year, Europe had reduced Russian gas pipeline imports by over half compared to pre-war levels, turning increasingly to liquefied natural gas and non-Russian pipeline sources such as Norway and Azerbaijan. Even after the Russia-Ukraine conflict, however, some Russian gas continued to reach European customers via Ukraine. In 2022, the Ukrainian route accounted for an estimated 5 to 10 percent of the reduced Russian gas volumes still entering the EU, this at a time when overall Russian gas shipments had fallen to around 60 to 80 billion cubic meters, down from the 155 billion cubic meters recorded in 2021. If no new transit contract is negotiated, this channel could be fully cut off in early 2025, potentially removing one of the last remaining pipelines delivering Russian gas directly into the EU. This would leave Europe even more reliant on alternative suppliers and LNG, potentially increasing exposure to higher global LNG prices and logistical constraints, while further motivating the EU's push toward renewable energy, enhanced storage capacity, energy efficiency measures, and other diversification efforts to safeguard its long-term energy security. Let's take a quick pause. Could you do us a favor? If you enjoy our content, please hit the like button. To help even more, leave your thoughts and feedback in the comments. Your engagement helps us grow. Supplier Contracts Austria's national oil and gas company, OMV, has historically depended heavily on Russian natural gas, a legacy dating back to the Soviet era. Before the geopolitical tensions and the 2022 invasion of Ukraine, Russian gas often accounted for more than 50% of Austria's annual natural gas consumption. Austria, which uses approximately 9 billion cubic meters of gas each year, primarily for heating, industrial processes and power generation, relied on stable, long-term contracts with Russia's Gazprom to ensure security of supply and price stability. However, the disruptions triggered by the conflict in Ukraine and subsequent EU sanctions fundamentally altered this relationship. In 2022, amid evolving payment terms, changing currency requirements and growing political friction, Gazprom halted deliveries to OMV, underscoring the fragility of Austria's previously dependable Russian supply. Following months of uncertainty, by early 2024, OMV officially terminated its long-term gas contract with Gazprom. This decision ended a decades-long commercial arrangement and signaled a definitive break with a key supplier that had once been considered a cornerstone of Austrian energy security. The abrupt termination of these contracts placed Austria in a challenging position. With domestic production covering only a small fraction of its annual needs and Russian gas streams curtailed, Austria must now diversify its energy portfolio to ensure a secure and affordable supply. 
Potential alternatives include ramping up pipeline imports from Norway, which has emerged as a critical supplier for many EU countries since 2022, and seeking out deliveries from North African producers like Algeria. Austria has also been exploring the possibility of increasing access to liquefied natural gas imports. While Austria itself does not have an LNG terminal, it can tap into new or expanded LNG infrastructure in neighboring countries such as Italy and Germany. For instance, Germany's floating LNG terminals on the North Sea coast and Italy's regasification terminals offer routes for LNG cargoes originating from the United States, Qatar, and other global suppliers. Low wind and limited energy generation. Wind energy both onshore and offshore has become a cornerstone of the EU's renewable energy strategy. Germany, with an installed onshore wind capacity surpassing 67 gigawatts by the end of 2023, typically relies on wind for roughly 20 to 25 percent of its annual electricity generation. However, variations in wind availability can be pronounced. During certain low wind periods in late 2023 and early 2024, German wind output dropped by as much as 30% below seasonal norms, forcing the country to ramp up gas-fired power plants and even coal-fired generation to meet demand. This pivot not only pushes up wholesale power prices, often surpassing 150 euros per megawatt hour during peak periods, but also erodes emissions gains achieved through renewables. Norway's Strategic Rethink Norway, long considered the battery of Europe due to its abundant hydropower resources, exported over 20 terawatt hours of electricity to neighboring countries in 2022. With Europe's integrated power market, Norway's hydropower has historically played a stabilizing role. However, reduced wind generation in northern Europe and surging demand have led to record high electricity prices in southern Norway, exceeding 200 euros per megawatt hour at times a stark contrast to the historically low domestic rates that were often below 20 to 30 euros per megawatt hour pre-crisis. Political pressure within Norway has mounted, with calls to renegotiate or restrict cross-border power interconnectors to Denmark, Germany, and the UK. Policymakers fear that excessive exports risk undermining Norway's energy affordability and security, forcing a delicate reassessment of international energy solidarity. Political Crisis in France France operates 56 nuclear reactors with a total installed capacity of about 61 to 63 gigawatts. Historically, these reactors have provided over 70% of France's domestic electricity, making it one of the world's most nuclear-reliant nations. Beyond meeting its own needs, France exports substantial surplus power. In the first 11 months of 2024, France exported approximately 84 terawatt-hours of electricity, an 85% increase compared to the same period in 2023, primarily to countries like Italy, Germany, and the UK. These exports have often served as a stabilizing factor within the EU's internal energy market, particularly during times of low renewable output or unexpected outages elsewhere. Political instability and potential fallout. The sudden collapse of France's government in late 2024 has introduced uncertainty in energy policymaking and regulatory oversight. A prolonged political deadlock could slow nuclear maintenance schedules, delay reactor restarts, or alter export policies. Even a short-term reduction in French electricity exports of as little as 5 to 10 terawatt-hours annually could trigger price spikes in neighboring markets, given tight margins and limited spare capacity. This scenario poses strategic risks for the EU, as nations dependent on French electricity may scramble for costlier alternatives ranging from expensive LNG-fired generation to emergency power imports from less stable sources. Limited energy generation by solar panels. Solar photovoltaic capacity in the EU surpassed 240 gigawatts by mid-2024, reflecting over a decade of robust investment and subsidized growth. In peak summer months, solar can cover up to 10 to 15 percent of the EU's electricity demand on sunny days. However, during winter, solar output can plummet to less than one-third of peak summer levels due to shorter daylight hours and a lower solar angle. In northern European countries, December output is often less than 20% of that in June. This seasonal decline forces greater reliance on dispatchable sources, natural gas, coal, nuclear, or imports, to meet winter peak demand. In December 2023, for example, German solar farms generated just 2 to 3 terawatt-hours, compared to nearly 7 to 8 terawatt-hours in July. 
such variability intensifies competition for scarce energy resources at a time when geopolitical constraints and dwindling Russian supplies are already pushing prices upward. U.S. and EU Tension The re-election of Donald Trump in the hypothetical 2024 U.S. presidential race has reintroduced uncertainties in transatlantic energy cooperation. Under previous America First policies, the U.S. considered imposing tariffs on various imports and hinted at renegotiating trade deals to favor domestic producers. Such policy directions could inflate the cost of U.S. LNG delivered to Europe, which has already soared in importance as a replacement for Russian pipeline gas. In 2022 and 2023, the EU imported a record 55 to 60 billion cubic meters of LNG from the U.S., up from around 22 billion cubic meters in 2021. Any rise in tariffs or restrictive measures could add 2 to 3 euros per megawatt hour to LNG import costs, according to some market analysts. Eastern European Vulnerabilities Countries like Hungary and Slovakia, which historically relied on Russian pipeline gas via Ukraine, now face compounded difficulties. They must adapt not only to the cessation of direct Russian flows, but also to shifting U.S. trade policies. Hungary, for instance, imported over 8 billion cubic meters of natural gas in 2022, more than half of which was from Russia. If U.S. LNG becomes less competitive or harder to secure, these countries may scramble for supply from the Southern Gas Corridor, Azerbaijan and Turkey, or ramp up storage investments and energy efficiency measures to buffer against price shocks. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching this video. We sincerely appreciate you joining us today. If our content resonated with you or sparked inspiration, please consider expressing your support by liking it and subscribing to stay connected with our community. Your support holds immense value for us. You can watch another video of our channel, which is now on the screen.